following is a presentation of the iRacing Esports Network. Good evening, good evening, race fans, and welcome to LSR TV's continuing coverage of the 2018 Championship Esports Association American Pool Supply Truck Series on the iRacing Esports Network. Just a leisurely seven-mile drive down the I-94 East, we're live in West Allis, Wisconsin, home to the famous Milwaukee Mile and the site for tonight's Milwaukee 150. David Schildhouse here, joined by Andrew Cardinale in the broadcast booth and Cisco Escaramuza working the controls to bring you tonight's action, all the sights and sounds of the trucks, the stars of this racing series. 16 races into this championship. This series has basically served as the personal playground for one Christian Peterson, already a four-time winner, and as expected, he is the points leader coming into tonight, enjoying a 167-point lead over Tyler Dalton. Andrew, I'll put it to you. If you're a driver not named Christian Peterson, what do you have to do tonight to give yourself an opportunity to put your own name in the headlines for once? Well, David, you know, there's this, I guess, continuing debate over whether or not a mile racetrack is a short track, but honestly, this place drives like a short track. If you can pitch it off into the corner just right, I'm not saying anything too uh, ambitious, but if you can make some serious moves down the bottom side of this racetrack, even on the top side, maybe make some passes up there, you, you, you really just have to take all tonight you can't just give and take quite as much as most races you kind of just have to start uh, getting selfish almost like Daytona Talladega where you just have to think about you your race and your season yeah still plenty to fight for here we'll have uh, 10 races left after tonight's event is finished so still a lot of opportunities to go out earn points and try and uh, get some wins and and maybe even try and make a fight you never know we've seen weird things happen in racing guys uh, hit a bad streak of luck and that's not to say Christian Peterson couldn't all of a sudden have, you know, eight or nine bad races in a row, and all of a sudden this thing gets really interesting. But uh, it all starts here tonight at the Milwaukee Mile, a track, as you said, uh, not an easy place to get around. It's a very flat racetrack, so uh, track position being one of the biggest things. How do you maintain track position when you're fighting amongst all these other race car drivers? Well, certainly, you know, on short tracks in the truck, sometimes you might uh, lend a fender to another driver, something like that. And really, that's going to come into pit stops. If you do end up tagging the wall or another truck, you might have to manage how you uh, take your optional repairs in the pit lane. You might have to maybe try a strategy call to keep yourself up in the front. If maybe you're starting to slide, maybe go for two tires towards the end. I mean, it's really just a matter of uh, keeping yourself in a position to do something should the right opportunity arise. Yeah, we may see the old chrome horn come into play tonight. Uh, typically, like you said, this is a speedway that acts like a short track. So uh, passing is, is a hard thing to do here. It comes at a premium. Really, you're just counting on the guy in front of you to maybe make a mistake and you get a better run off the corner. Uh, but other than that, we can see some single file racing. And uh, you look at the same guy's rear bumper lap after lap. That can get a little frustrating and you start to lose your patience. So winning the war on your own head is definitely going to be another key to victory for somebody. And maybe it'll be another driver other than Christian Peterson. Yeah, for sure. Like you mentioned, the chrome horn possibly coming into effect. I mean, it's really just a matter of, you know, how desperate these guys are for their season. You mentioned there's still eight, nine races left that they can make something happen to, uh, to you know, to better their result come Rockingham in November. And uh, it's just a matter of exactly how far they want to go tonight. Well, speaking of the man who will probably call his name a lot tonight, that'll bring us to tonight's starting lineup. And no surprise, the man on pole here at the Milwaukee Mile is just that guy, Christian Peterson, in the number 23, firing off from P1, running a blistering qualifying lap, 30 seconds, 0.754, over a tenth of a second better than your outside qualifier, John Lyday. So uh, already Christian Peterson off to a brilliant start tonight, looking to leverage that P1 start. 
into another checkered flag. Row two is going to feature Jeremy Adams in the 89 and Richard L. Regan Jr. in the number 46. Inside row number three, it's going to be the 84 of John Theodore at his outside, the 06 of Gerald Campbell. Inside row number four, it's going to be the number one of Reese Baham and his outside, the 48 of Tom Morano. And in the uh, fifth row, we'll have William Kempf down the bottom side, starting from ninth position. To his outside will be Derek Paulson in the number five. He'll be starting tenth. Inside of row number six will give us Tyler Dalton, Brad Car Carpenter, sorry, to his outside. Row number seven brings us Jacob Porter and Will Dravicki, 13th, 14th. Going back to row number eight, it's going to be Gary Sexton and Paul Henley, followed up by Kenny Lowry and Jeremy Watkins, rounding out your field in 17th and 18th, respectively. The 18 drivers will take the green flag here tonight. We'll get one pace lap and then we'll go for 125 laps. So 125 miler here. Uh, high probability of green flag pit stops as well, Andrew. So again, all the pieces may come into play here. You got to maintain a good pace on the track. Uh, manage the tires as well to go through a whole run and not lose too much. But uh, you got to execute on pit road. And this is not an easy pit road, as you'll see. It's kind of an abrupt entry uh, off of turn four on this narrow front straightaway. There's a, a, a pit wall that juts out, basically bisects the entire front stretch. So not a lot of room to operate there. Got to be real careful getting on a pit road. Definitely. And even coming out of the pit lane, you have to be very, 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 very careful. There we go. Coming out of turn number two, staying on that bottom of the racetrack, staying on the apron. And of course, you know, iRacing has now implemented the feature where you get a penalty if you wash too high. So whereas before it was just a courtesy thing, now you have to stay below that line. And I'm sure we'll be calling the name of at least one driver tonight who uh, maybe goes over the edge there, earns himself a black flag on pit road exit. And that's uh, just one of those things you can't do, really shooting yourself in the foot, uh, prevent yourself from getting a good finish here. But uh, that'll be uh, remain to be seen here as we'll go for 125 laps, like I said. A nice long race. But if this thing keeps a, a green flag look to it, those laps can go by pretty quickly, as you saw, about a half a minute to get around here. And that pace will drop off as the laps uh, wear on, the tires wear out. And uh, so we'll see uh, see these guys get after it. But again, the restart and the initial start, your best opportunity is to make up some spaces if you're a little bit further in the back, past these guys when they're right near you. But all eyes will be on Christian Peterson and this pace car is going to make the hard left-hand turn down to that pit road. Field in control of Christian Peterson. And the green flag is in the air. We are underway here at the Milwaukee Mile. Thanks for joining us tonight on the iRacing Esports Network. Through turns one and two, of course, it is that 23 car down on the bottom side. The 06 making the move as well. That's Gerald Campbell getting into the fifth position. He started in sixth, so a big move there. John Lydae falling back into the clutches of none other than Jeremy Adams and Rich Dragon. Good side-by-side -side battle here for second place. These guys sort of tiptoeing around while the tires get up to temperature. You don't want to step over the line. It takes a lot of discipline to run side-by-side -side around this flat racetrack. That truck on the inside lane just wants so desperately to use up more space. He's hoping the guy on the outside is giving him a little bit of room to operate as they're starting to get down to single file here, still side-by-side -side as they work off turn two for that second position. Good battle there. Gets a good run on that high side. Does the number 22 of John Lydade. He's not giving up just yet on this run. Lie day not giving up yet, still early, but Jeremy Adams digging down on the bottom side. Here comes Campbell now, get a big run on John Lie day out of turn four. Couldn't quite get there. Now he's going to dip low, see if he can make something happen in turn one. Looks like he has his nose underneath the 22, almost three wide in the turn one. I tell you, Andrew, it is so tempting sometimes, especially a track like this. You see two guys battling in front of you and you get a great run off the corner. You'd think you can just take that momentum and go three wide, but it's just not a good idea. That's a very, very bold move uh, to make here. Maybe you save that for later in the race, uh, but you know, not 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 the time to do that here early on. As we see now, the inside late starting to win out. Uh, the 22 of Lindy losing a few positions now under assault from the 46 of Richard Regan Jr. Oh, a little bit of contact there. 46 sideways. He might be able to save it down on the apron. Oh, what a piece of driving there. An amazing save out of Richard Reagan. Hangs onto it, loses plenty of positions there, but he's going to get right back in line now next to the number 19 of Tyler Dalton. Either way, as we get the replay up on your screen, a great piece of driving, and that's going to save his early goings here at Milwaukee. Uh, an absolute beauty of a drive right there from Richard Reagan Jr. Uh, probably going to need a new pair of shorts. 
uh, after that little excursion down into the uh, apron area of turn one. That's not something you usually get away with, but uh, he stabbed the brakes, uh, kept control of the truck, and even when he brought it back up on track, the other drivers were aware enough to give him the room to recover. Uh, he might have roughed up the tires there a little bit. The heart uh, rate's going a little bit faster than it was, but uh, he'll fall back to the seventh position. Definitely could have been a lot worse for him. Oh, definitely. And, you know, maybe he can try and turn that into a bit of a learning move. Of course, uh, having a big save like that early in the race can maybe help you uh, learn how to, I guess, hang on to it later in the race if something like that happens again. Obviously, of course, we don't hope that happens to him, but it's definitely something to put in the memory bank just in case he has to drive the truck like that again down on the inside, dirt tracking it on the apron. Well, I tell you, nine out of ten times, you do not get away with a slide like that, especially at a flat track without any banking to catch uh, the race truck, sort of help you straighten it out. My goodness, he needed all the real estate that he had available to him there. And, uh, well, there you go, a little bit of excitement, but we got uh, another battle here on the racetrack. I thought shaping up. Uh, but this sort of died down again around the number 22 of John Lyday. He sort of seems to be the magnet for all the side-by-side -side racing. No change up front. want to highlight that. Christian Peterson uh, has jumped out to about a 1.2 second lead over Jeremy Adams. Gerald Campbell in third. Uh, John Lyday sort of holding up the train on the bottom lane here back and forth. So nice scramble from fourth, fifth, and uh, so on. And that dented left side on the 22 uh, going to be a battle scar as to what happened down in a turn one a few laps ago with the 46 car, but nothing too bad. And now you've got the 84 of John Theodore trying to dig the one on his back end. That's Reese Bayham looking for some kind of ground he can make up, maybe make a pass down into a corner. But it's going to take a lot to get a run down one of these long straightaways into one of these longer sweeping corners. You know, the entry to these corners uh, is, is a very tough place to get into when you're side by side. you got to take a shallow entry if you're on the inside lane. Uh, and you run out of room a lot quicker than you think. It's kind of a, a real sharp turn to get into these corners, and we saw that happen with the contact uh, a few laps ago. Two guys just entering together, and, and you bang doors, and it's very normal to see that here at the Milwaukee Mile. But uh, generally speaking, if you can get a better run off the corner and get down these long straightaways better, it's going to set you up. But very rarely will you see somebody go to the outside to make a pass. You're just trying to be patient. But when you're being patient and you see the guys in front of you, getting a little bit smaller out that windshield, you know it's time to go. What do you do when you're in that situation, Andrew? you got to put a bumper to him, right? I, it's really just a matter of breaking down the corner and figuring out where they're getting away from you, trying to either at least capitalize on what you're good at and they might not be so good at, or trying to minimize, minimize your losses throughout each corner. Of course, if you're giving up some on entry, try and maybe take the entry a little bit slower, maybe a little bit faster, depending on you know what you're doing down there. And if they're just getting a huge run off, see if maybe you can change your line to, to straighten out that, that, that run from either turn two or two, turn four onto the straightaway and try to get a little more speed that way. Either way, it's really hard. And you mentioned the entries to these corners here are very, very deceiving. You almost feel like uh, you're at Lucas Oil Speedway where you can just throw it off into the corner and you really can't because you run out of room really quickly. There's such a specific racing line that you want to be in here at Milwaukee, and it's the same thing at Lucas Oil, but it's up on the top side. And you really, if you don't get into that specific line, you're going to have a bad day. It's just not going to work out too well. So the entries to these corners are very deceiving, but if you can make it work, get down there, make something stick for a pass, I think that's going to be very important as we see the 84 going for such a pass right there. Lade blocks into one. Yeah, that was a big chop right there from John Lyde, not wanting to give up the bottom. And I tell you, if you're uh, <laughs> if you're the driver of the native number 84, John Theodore, uh, and you see your front end get chopped off like that when you sort of stick your nose in there, uh, that can rustle your jimmies a little bit. You're not going to like that, and you're not going to put up with that for very many laps. No, definitely not. If you're someone who's getting blocked here, especially this early in the race, only on lap 12 of 125, tenth of the way in, you're not going to want to stand for that for long. Obviously, it's still early, so you don't want to uh, send somebody around if you do get fed up with it you know, this early in the race. But you certainly don't want to, uh, I guess, allow the driver in front that's blocking you to think that maybe they can walk all over you and keep doing that the rest of the race. You have to kind of make your own stand, and you know, if they keep blocking you like that, eventually you do have to lay a bumper maybe. Obviously, you don't want to wreck anyone, but definitely at least you know, make that pass. Yeah, once you reach your braking point, you don't stab the brake pedal quite like you did the last time you gave him a brake, and you figure, well, he's going to wreck himself off my front bumper if he does it again, and, and that sucks for him. So uh, we'll see how that plays out. John Lyday still rolling around at a decent pace, but I'm telling you, I've, 
Theodore probably feels he's being held up, and now he comes under assault from the number 19 of Tyler Dalton. Saw an opening there. Dalton trying to go side-by-side -side into three. A lot of room left on the bottom lane there, side-by-side -side still. Theodore on the outside, Dalton on the inside. Inside's going to win out here, I think. Dalton's going to clear himself up off a of four. He does. New man in the fifth position, Tyler Dalton, driver of the number 19. Having a good run so far on these early opening laps. And David, as we mentioned how tough it is to pass here, this 19 of Tyler Dalton has been just working his way through the field. Obviously, he got that gimme with Richard Reagan going for that slide down into turn one. But since then, he got by the one really quickly. That was Reese Bray uh, yeah, Bayham. And he made that look extremely easy. He made that pass on Theodore look even easier. I really feel like this 19 is not going to stand up for the kind of things uh, you know, with Lyde blocking into one like that. It wasn't anything dirty uh, from Lyde, but it was certainly aggressive, and I don't think that this 19 is going to stand for that this early when he's just completely spanking the field. And I actually noticed that he's running kind of high uh, in the entry to the corner, then straightening that back straightaway out even longer, getting that bigger run. And uh, I always like to reference back to Denny Hamlin talking about how he races at Richmond. He is pretty successful there, and he always just mentions, you know, straightening that run from turn four down the front straightaway or turn two down the back straightaway out just trying to lengthen that time that you're in the throttle and I really think that it's going to be one of the ways to be fast here tonight it looks like Christian Peterson is running that line where he's a little bit higher in and just starts to fight that truck down to the bottom around the center of the corner and then lengthen the time that he's in the throttle well it's one of the benefits of being the leader you get to dictate your own line and speaking of dictating a line we had a change uh, for that fourth position Tyler Dalton Really made quick work of John Lyday. Got a great run off of four. Got alongside him down the front straightaway just a few laps ago and uh, made a, a very quick pass. So put uh, Tyler Dalton up to fourth, but he's about six and a half seconds back from Christian Peterson, about three seconds back from third place Jeremy Adams. Gerald Campbell continues to run in the second position. So uh, sort of as we predicted, Andrew, Tyler Dalton, seemingly better tires, and John Lyday didn't put up much of a fight. Definitely not, and Tyler Dalton is up seven positions since the start of this race, David. He's gone from 11th to 4th, and I actually was looking through the results so far. Uh, Kenny Lowry has moved up seven positions as well from uh, 17th to 10th, but Tom Morano, I'm not sure if something big happened to him, but he has fallen from 8th at the start to 16th currently. Yeah, that's a big drop. It's nice to see two drivers uh, make up seven positions. That is not easy to do, so give a call to Tyler Dalton and Kenny Lowry as well. Lowry driving that 54 machine up to the 10th position, doing nice work there. Uh, and, and again, Tyler Dalton up to fourth from his 11th starting position. So uh, everybody's still sort of single file. We got a little bit of a nod of cars here. Back to Richard Reagan. We highlighted him earlier uh, with that big slide into turn one, but still... Uh, able to hold on to that eighth position, which is where he settled out after the big slide. Got William Kempf on his back bumper and Kenny Lowry right there in that day glow, bright neon yellow, almost Menards looking number 54 machine. So a little nod of cars here, but again, this track produces single file racing, and that's what we're seeing. William Kempf right up on the back end of that 46, though. I don't think he exactly wants to stay single file, at least behind the 46, for too much longer. He looks like he wants to put the bumper to the 46, but in a way that, of course, isn't going to send him around and, you know, produce a caution and kind of ruin the whole flow of the race. It, but it definitely looks like these guys are starting to get a little more patient as laps go on. Of course, starts and restarts are very uh, notorious for being... Uh, I guess chaotic, having uh, impatient drivers making passes, but it seems like things have calmed down until about now. It seems like a couple of these guys are getting right up on a bumper, getting frustrated with some of these drivers in front of them, and they don't want to get held up, of course. If you lose a lap here, or sorry, not a lap, but a second here, it's going to you know, hurt you later down the road if we don't get a caution to bunch the field back up. So uh, should we go on a long green flag run here? Of course, you have to save every tenth of a second. Uh, and you can't just stand to get held up like that. No, certainly not. It's, it's tough when you see uh, guys getting away from you and you know you're losing time. As we had a little bit of a scramble there between uh, the 30 of Will Dravicki, uh, made a peek to the inside of Kenny Lowry there, couldn't pull off the pass. Uh, but, yeah, you know, it's it's tough when you are you think you're faster than the guy in front of you. And I think we're going to talk about this all night. You think you're faster than the guy in front of you, but you just can't go anywhere. You can't just... It's hard to just move a guy. Uh, it takes a lot of skill to put a bumper to somebody uh, in a way that's not going to cause them to, to lose traction and spin out because you don't want to cause the yellow doing it, but 
there's a fine uh, line, I guess you could say, between moving and, and spinning a guy, uh, especially at a flat track. Again, when you don't have the banking to help a driver save an out-of-control vehicle, it's really a tough proposition. Yeah, of course, and if you move somebody here and, and you hit them maybe a little too hard, uh, you know, they're going to spin out right in front of you. Where are you going to go? You, you can't just hit them so hard that they just completely lose traction in the rear wheels. And I think that's kind of where you're getting there is they don't have uh, the banking like at Bristol, per se, uh, to catch the trucks. I mean, you hit them, all right, you might get by them, but if, if you hit them too hard, they're just going to go around right in front of you and probably a lot of other trucks, and you're at least going to hit them or have nowhere to go, maybe spin out yourself and probably get run over. So you have to really, I guess, consider the positives and the negatives, the pros and the cons, before you make a move like that in the first place. And also how you're going to do it without just chucking somebody into the car completely wrapping them. It's definitely an art pop and run. And uh, I, I think a lot of people kind of forget that sometimes and just go into a corner. And here we go, the 09 making the move. Finally, William Kemp gets a bigger run into turn one and side by side with, with Richard Reagan. Makes the pass look easy for the 46 is the first crossover. Yeah, nice move there. William Kemp saw his opportunity and took it. <laughs> and Richard Reagan, not wanting to stay behind that 0-9, makes a big aggressive move, shows the nose going into three, forcing the 0-9 up the hill a little bit to take a little bit different entry, not knowing if he was going to just full-on send it in there. Now we're side-by-side. Side. This is for the eighth position. Reagan on the inside, Kemp on the outside, and that's Kenny Lowry in the 54 watching it all. These guys fight side-by-side side around the racetrack. This is where things get interesting, Andrew, because, again, these guys go side by side, and you're that third driver watching it out your windshield, like, come on, guys, figure it out. Somebody go. It's like you're driving down the interstate, and you got two people going side by side in front of you, one in the fast lane, one in the riding lane, and they're both going the same speed. It just drives you absolutely crazy. Not to mention uh, the driver on the inside is a big bobble there out of the 54, out of turn number four. The guy on the bottom side, in the case of Richard Reagan Jr. there for a couple of laps, is going to want to throw it in harder than you can. You're going to want to you almost, just as a competitive driver, you're going to want to throw it in, maybe make a slide job as Will Dravicki gets a little bit loose on the bottom side underneath uh, William Kempf. But you're going to want to make a slide job, and you, you really can't in a place like this, can you? I mean, it's, it's just so flat. What do you have to rely on? Just like maybe getting hit, what do you have to rely on if you get hit? There's no banking. So, you know, you want to make that pass and just send it off in there, pretty much. But how are you going to do that and not just go all the way to the wall? So I, I think that was really good racing out of Richard Reagan to, to sit down there and force the 09 to run the outside line, but didn't throw the throw the truck into the corner too, too hard, didn't make any crazy moves, just got back down at the bottom and kept his truck there and eventually made the pass again. And it actually allowed Kenny Lowry by as the 09 now, William Kempf, in front of Will Dravicki. And I think that 30 starting to get impatient. It's always a, a good thing to take advantage of when two guys go side by side and a guy gets kicked up to the outside lane. Sort of stick your nose in there and say, thanks for opening the door. I'll walk right through it. I'll take that spot. That's easy. It's the easiest pass he may make all night. But uh, again, it's just sort of the nature of the beast here of the Milwaukee Mile when it's a one groove racetrack around the bottom and everybody fights for that real estate. Somebody gets out of shape and goes to the outside lane. It's like blood in the water with a bunch of sharks. They're going to jump all over that or swim to it or whatever sharks do. I guess they don't really jump. But, um, you know, that's that's the best analogy I can think of. Race car drivers are opportunistic individuals by nature. If they're doing this, they're opportunistic, and they're going to take advantage of the opportunities that are presented to them. So a guy that's out of the racing groove, that's easy money right there. Definitely. And for Kenny Lowry, he showed it how it was done. You let them battle it out. As soon as the door opens, you go through it. It might be on the top side, might be on the bottom. Uh, in his case, he was lucky to find it on the bottom side. Just went right on by that 09. But now he's actually got to deal with Richard Reagan in front of him, and he gets a little bit out of line there. Here comes Kempf. Doesn't stick the nose there, but he's definitely showing it. He gets a run out of turn number four, and William Kempf going to draw alongside Kenny Lowry for just a moment. Uh, of course, the top line gave Lowry a big run down the straightaway, but now Lowry going to get back down to the bottom, protects that position, and keeps trucking on. And uh, these guys are just they, they're starting to get desperate. Well, we're a little bit past halfway through this uh, fuel run, I believe. Uh, according to Cisco, we're looking at about 59 laps or so on a tank of American ethanol racing fuel. So uh, we're on lap 33 now, so a little bit past halfway into the run. And possibly somebody might try a strategy, if this thing stays green, to just do it on one stop. They would really have to stretch it. But again, you figure halfway into a run, the tires uh, are not optimal at this point. So this place isn't easy to get around when the tires are new, 
Uh, and so when they have a little bit of wear on them, certainly not even uh, any easier. So these guys are sliding around a little bit. It's a little bit harder to get down into the corner under the same speed that you want to, especially side by side. Uh, so, you know, we'll see how this continues to play out. Maybe about 20 laps or so, uh, or 30 laps or so, I should say, away from a uh, green flag pit stop for a lot of these guys. So possibly one-stop strategy. If you're one of these guys back in the mid-pack, maybe that's the key to improving your overall finishing position. Yeah, and speaking of, you know, going through a, a fuel run here, as the tires wear in and as the track wears in, uh, I'm looking through the field and going up to leader Christian Peterson, who actually now has a six-second lead over Jeremy Adams. I see some of these guys starting to move up the track a little bit, almost like the line is changing like a dirt track. You see Peterson almost, he does there, actually, at a turn two, wash up the track a bit more than uh, these guys were earlier, and it almost looks like more of these guys. I was noticing Kenny Lowry really running a higher line. William Kemp starting to follow him up there as well. A lot of these guys starting to migrate a little bit higher as rubber starts to get laid down on the bottom side, hot rubber, that is, and as the tires wear out. Yeah, you got to shift around uh, the racing line. If, if where you're running isn't getting it done and you're not going faster than the guy in front of you, you got to try something else. Can't keep doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different result. That is the definition of insanity. So, yeah, you got to search around uh, the racetrack. Now, again, it's a fairly narrow racing group, so you don't really have a lot of space to explore. But if you can find a way to maybe uh, dime in the corner a little bit differently, uh, if you have the ability to let the car drift up in the center of the corner and then stand on the gas, get a good drive off and drive straight off the corner, uh, that might save the right front tire a little bit. And remember, these guys have two sets of tires to work with as well. So got to manage the fuel, got to manage the tires, got to manage the patience. There's a whole lot of management going on here at this flat track. And uh, that's why guys like Christian Peterson are so successful. They are masters of all those trades. Yeah, you really have to be uh, a lot smarter, I think, than uh, brave when it comes to traffic like this. Obviously, you have to have the bravery to stick down on the bottom side like Richard Reagan did for a couple of laps underneath William Kemp. But you have to really consider how the tires are going to wear and what you're going to do with your truck when you start to lose grip. Christian Peterson, a mastermind at doing it. And uh, he's not alone, of course, but I think he's one of the best. And, I mean, you have to really consider how you're going to break the whole race down. If you're not fast once you break the tires in, the tires will be broke in for most of the race. So obviously, unless you just get caution after caution after caution, you won't be good if you're not good after 10 laps or so. You have to you know, consider the whole race and make sure you're fast the whole time. So even if you give up, say, 5, 10 laps of being quick to have 15 more down the road, it's kind of what you have to do. Yeah, when, when you don't have an apparent yellow coming, uh, it really shifts the strategy that you have to have, especially if you know you don't uh, match up uh, as far as you know speed goes for the leaders. Uh, you sort of run your own race, and, and you're in your own little world then, trying to micromanage what you got going on. Uh, so you know this little group of cars that we've been continuing to watch is the best group of cars on the racetrack. These are the closest competitors. So these guys uh, all seemingly sort of putting down the same pace. Uh, so we'll see what these guys do as far as pit strategy because they don't want to run around each other. They want to be free of each other, free of the dirty air that might be coming off uh, the, the car in front of them, messing up their uh, ability to get through the corner. So, you know, even though they're not going very fast, downforce does come into play here at the Milwaukee Mile. They're still doing over 120 miles an hour. So if you can get away from running behind somebody, you may want to change your pit strategy so you're out in front. Yeah, definitely. I mean, every little bit of grip is going to make the difference here. And as we see it, battle actually starts to take place here for third position. We mentioned Tyler Dalton earlier saving his tires and going right by some of these guys like John Lyde. Now he's going after uh, Gerald Campbell, and he's almost got the pass. There it is into turn one. Campbell actually gives him the line, and that was a very smart move out of the 06. Get behind him. Keep trucking on. Don't lose too much time. Don't battle for too long. A great move there from Tyler Dalton and Gerald Campbell to just make that as easy as it could be. Yeah, not wasting any time there was Tyler Dalton. Put him up to fourth, and seemingly, uh, I'm sorry, put him up to third, rather. Uh, Gerald Campbell just sort of let him have it, I think, going into the corner. Realized he was beat. Uh, nothing to gain by racing him there as he almost tags the wall off of turn four. Uh, so it looks like the tires might be giving up a little bit on the 06 machine, but Tyler Dalton, again, sort of holding pace, uh, still seven and a half seconds back from Christian Peterson. Uh, I think when he took over the fourth position, he was maybe six seconds back or so. So I don't think he's lost as much time to Christian Peterson as other drivers have during this 43-lap run. So uh, Tyler Dalton seemingly doing well, and if he can catch a yellow, maybe catch up to Christian Peterson. It might be a challenge for a lead there. 
Yeah, this goes back to uh, playing the, the race as a whole rather than just the maybe 10 laps that you'll have the best tires. Uh, Tyler Dalton, just as these guys are starting to falter, capitalizing on those mistakes and, and really just running a little, a little bit slower, running the tires out quicker. He, he's moving around, figuring out where he can be fast, and I think he really just did a great job, like you mentioned, David, of just saving the tires at the start, realizing this is 125 laps and he has to be fast for as many of those as possible, not just when he has new tires. And he's doing a great job so far as Campbell actually runs really wide on turn four, uh, keeps the, the truck you know, perfectly in line though. It was just a bit of an interesting line. Uh, but really, a lot of these guys are starting to falter. I know Brad Carpenter is falling back, and uh, really that battle we were looking at earlier from Reagan back to Dravicki is starting to spread out a little bit. And really, it's just a single file spread out race right now. Drivers starting to falter, other drivers still having a little bit of speed, and those drivers with speed right now are likely going to come down uh, to the end of the race in really, really good positions. Well, we'll take advantage of this green flag run to step aside for just a moment, and uh, you won't miss a thing. Stay tuned right here on the iRacing Esports Network. It's the CEA American Pool Supply Truck Series live from the Milwaukee Mile. We'll be right back after these messages. So, you want to race in NASCAR. The road starts here. Introducing the eNASCAR at Night Series powered by iRacing. This is the gateway for all aspiring 13 to 16 year olds. Starting June 20th, ignite your dreams of one day racing in the top tiers of NASCAR. Go to www.iracing.com slash ignite for full details. Welcome back to the CEA American Pool Supply Truck Series here on the iRacing Esports Network. No change up front. Christian Peterson continues to lead. He's led all 51 laps so far in full control by 6.4 seconds over Jeremy Adams. David Schildhouse on the call here along with Andrew Cardinale. And uh, Andrew, we've been treated to some pretty good racing so far, even though it's not been exactly side by side. Still a nice long green flag run and, and some good packs of racing, but uh, it's all Christian Peterson out front and we're getting close to green flag pit stops. 
Well, David, the start was pretty exciting watching those guys vie for positions real early. And ever since, like you said, it's just gotten single file, have a pass here and there. And now we're just waiting, like you said, on these guys to decide when they want to make their pit stop here. Uh, we're looking at possibly having a one-stop race, maybe two, and it's really going to be close. We're getting closer and closer to halfway, just a little ways away. So now you have to assume they're going for just that one-stop strategy. And that's going to be quite a while on tires as we had a position uh, change here with John Lottie and Gerald Campbell since the commercial break. Uh, the 22 has gone by the 06. Uh, and anyways, back to the, the whole debate of, you know, when you come in, the first driver I think to come in is going to bring most of the rest of the field, just like we see on a Sunday afternoon of the NASCAR Cup Series. Realistically, I think the first one to come down is going to bring the rest. That's probably a fair assessment to make. Monkey see, monkey do. Uh, because, again, the guy that hits pit roads getting the fresh tires. He's going to increase his pace. So if you're still out there on old tires, you're doing nothing but losing time. But uh, before we get to these green flag pit stops, I want to sneak in a shout-out to our friends over at Joel Real Timing. Providing coverage of the CEA American Pool Supply Series is Joel Real Timing, the official timing software of LSR TV and the iRacing Esports Network. Whether you spend your time on the sim behind the wheel or on the pit box or even from the spotter stand, Joel Real Timing is the go-to software for iRacing timing and scoring analytics. Get yourself a basic download for free or get the pro version today at joel-real-timing.com. Joel Real Timing. Proud sponsor here tonight, bringing you all the sights and sounds of this great racing series at the Milwaukee Mile, we are still under green flag conditions, 56 laps in of 125. And Andrew, all eyes on Christian Peterson to see when he's going to make the, the commitment into pit road, because I think you're right. Once he does, I, I'm hard pressed to believe that anybody else would stay out there. And definitely. And if you're one of these guys in a battle, uh, say, I don't know, a Kenny Lowry, a Will Dravicki trying to make a position or two up on, you know, drivers ahead. You might come in first. You might come in just before the halfway mar uh, mark. You might try and maybe, you know, see if you have the fuel to go a couple of extra laps later on to try and get those fresh tires and get that position. Because, uh, again, track position is everything to a place like this. It's hard to pass once you wear the tires in. So, you know, unless you have a restart, you want to turn everybody back up and have people in multiple lanes, stuff like that, it's not going to be easy to pass at all. So we might see maybe even Richard Reagan come in early. One of these guys trying to make up some positions, trying to make up some time in general, come in early, try and get a couple of spots. And, you know, it's called an undercut or a short pit. I think we might see one or two. Uh, if not, once Christian Peterson comes in, I think the field has to come in. But, I mean, you really, you're kind of boxed in by the fact that it's a 125-lap race, halfway is around 62 or so, call it 62 or 63. Uh, so you really can't short pit well before then because you're not really doing yourself any favors in that second run you're gonna to have to run more laps and maybe the fuel won't make it so uh, I'll be curious to see if anyone does go for the undercut uh, but what lap that may be we're you know getting close to halfway on lap 59 now so uh, a few laps till halfway it'll be interesting to see if these guys even try and make that strategy because again if you're selling yourself short on the other end of the stick with not having enough fuel or tires to make it that second stint if you're gonna one-stop it What's the point? Well, yeah, that goes back to just seeing what your fuel number is so far. And, you know, these guys don't have, uh, don't necessarily have crew chiefs like the, the guys in real NASCAR racing do. So you might have to do it all on your own just down the straightaway is when you have a chance. And, of course, that comes into issues if you're coming up on a lap car. But anyways, that aside, uh, it's a really, uh, again, an art form almost trying to balance what you know what kind of strategy you pull if you can make it those extra few laps if you want to run those extra few laps on tires or if you want to try and press on as far as you can so that you're running less laps on those tires that you finish the race in just in case maybe you get a caution later on and you want to restart on those tires so you don't have to come in try and you know pull a strategy move just you know for some track position of course again it's hard to pass granted you're gonna to have to balance your tire wear at that point but it, it, it's all just an art form there's so many different components these guys really I'm surprised we haven't seen one or two of the lead drivers come in just yet, but we've had some pit stops further back. I think we're just a couple of laps away, though, here, David. And for the first time tonight, a truck has passed Christian Peterson now. That was the number 31 of Brad Carpenter, and he was on fresh tires, but that's the first time we've seen anybody pass the number 23 
albeit unlapping himself for going back to one lap down. But as we say that, here comes Christian Peterson to pit road on lap 61, coming to 62. Hits the pit road speed line, 45 miles an hour all the way down. So all eyes on the crew of the number 23 machine as he hits pit road. It's a lonely man. I don't see anybody else hitting pit road as he will come into the box to the attention of his crew. It'll be four tires and fuel, no doubt, for the 23. Looks to be a routine stop so far. Right side coming down, left side going up. Finishing the service here. And then, uh, again, nobody taking advantage of pit road, so he's down and away. Christian Peterson gets the service done, and he'll be on his way. Make sure to keep it on the apron, but that'll hand the lead over now to the number 89, Jeremy Adams. So we'll see how this all starts to cycle out. I also saw the number 19, Tyler Dalton, on pit road there. Looks like Derek Paulson and the 89 of Adams is as well. And everybody is coming in right here. Christian Peterson made the move. These guys ran one more lap aside from Tyler Bal Dalton, rather, who actually came in with Christian Peterson. But re the rest of these guys are all coming in now. I don't think I've seen a single truck go on by the pit lane this time around. Uh, big problems for the number 89 of Jeremy Adams. I think he went right past his pit stall. Uh, I don't know how else to say it. I think he went right past his pit stall and uh, pulled off and <laughs> has seemingly reset in his pit stall. So a huge issue there for Jeremy Adams, throwing away a great run for that Vincere Motorsports, uh, Vincere Racing Team. Uh, huge issues on pit road, and those are the sort of things, Andrew, you really f shoot yourself in the foot, and that's not going to be a good time for him. Yeah, that's really unfortunate to see for him. He's going to have to wait on the tow, going to have to wait on the pit stop, and even then he's going to be laps, laps down. That's not something you're just going to get back at this point in the race, especially... I mean, there's no threat of cautions. We've had none so far. It's not like Bristol where you might be able to count on one uh, here if a battle shakes up. It's just a matter of, you know, if we get one, it's going to be random. So you can't count on one. I, I, it's just a really bad break, unfortunately, for the 89 car, or truck, rather, of Jeremy Adams. But on the other hand, it's going to be very easy for Tyler Dalton to take over that second position now. We're, uh, it almost might have been uh, interesting to see if maybe Dalton made up enough time on Adams to bring the battle to him, but now ain't got to worry about it that 19 all alone in second place. It seemed like just a, a mental lapse there uh, for the number 89 of Jeremy Adams. I think he just forgot where his pit stall was or got lost and thinking about hitting his his. Uh, marks in the pit. So I don't know. We'll never know. We'll, I doubt we'll ever know truly what happened. Only he really knows at this point, but that is a huge blow to his race after running solidly in the second position, throwing it all away there. And I said at the top of the show, you can lose a race on pit road pretty easily as I think Tyler Dalton also caught the wall, uh, maybe coming off a of turn two or, or got very, very close to it. So uh, again, these guys uh, got to be real careful out there on the racetrack. Uh, taking care of their stuff, taking care of their truck and their tires, but uh, slippery conditions on the new tires, you forget how much grip you have, you can stuff yourself in the fence pretty easily. Yeah, of course, they haven't been on tires like this since the start of the race, and even then they were, you know, dealing with other drivers around them and the field being congested. Now they might be, you know, a completely open track or maybe have one slower car ahead of them or one driver that they're battling, that's about it. So very different conditions this time around they've kind of got to learn the truck once more and actually Tyler Dalton stuck behind I believe that's the I'm not even sure what car that is that's right in front of him pick a porter actually go three truck and it is just making it extremely difficult for Dalton to get around him yeah not making life easy for him and as a lapped vehicle sort of uh, racing etiquette to not put up much of a fight for the lead lap vehicles as they come through Dalton will uh, get the position now and, and clear himself up down the back or the front straightaway, I should say. Probably a little unhappy with the fact that he uh, had to work that hard to get around the lap machine there. Uh, that was the uh, 03 of Jacob Porter. So Dalton now settles into second place, but he's about eight seconds back. But again, I want to highlight he's moved up nine positions from his original starting spot of 11th. So definitely the big mover of the race right now. Uh, Kenny Lowry as well has gained eight positions. He's now up to ninth with the troubles of Jeremy Adams benefiting everybody going plus one. But uh, Christian Peterson, eight seconds to the good, seemingly won't have to make another pit stop. So short of a yellow coming out or him making a big mistake, he appears to be on easy street. He may be, but John Lottie certainly isn't. He has Gerald Campbell all over it his rear end and this battle shaped up just before the pit stops where Lade actually drove up to the 06 and passed him for that third position now Gerald Campbell trying to uh, I guess bring the fight back to John Lade throws it into turn three he can't get there uh, even for a bump uh, but this battle shaping up and really it shaped up 
10, 15 laps to go, and it's only getting better. These guys on new tires, they can trust the truck again to make a move. This is going to be one to watch for the third position. Yeah, good battle here. That VFW machine, the 06, uh, trying to do everything he can, Gerald Campbell, to get around John Lyday. Both these drivers have spent most of this race up in the top five, but this is a, the best fight on the track right now, and it is for that third position. John Lyday sort of been sticking to the bottom lane there, and again, you see the damage to the left door uh, from that earlier contact with Richard Reagan Jr., uh, but no worse for the wear is that number 22 as he motors away uh, from Gerald Campbell. So, again, these guys sort of stuck together, seemingly running a good pace. See, the 06 sort of surges in the middle of the corner, gets to, to the throttle a little bit faster, but it has to check up. And it's really easy to do that at this track. You think you got the good bite to get the exit. You get down to the throttle a little bit sooner, trying to beat that guy in front of you to the gas to get a better run off. And all of a sudden, you're pushing to the outside wall and tearing the right side off of it. Yeah, it seems like Campbell can really center the corner a bit better than Lade, but Lade just gets a great run down the straightaway and is able to hang on to that position. And then, you know, the 06 tries to bring the fight to him in the entry of the corner and maybe has a slight advantage into the corner into about the center of 1 and 2 or 3 and 4, and then just the 22 the whole way down the straightaway out of turn 2 or turn 4, whatever it may be, just has a great drive out and is really able to just keep that third position. Another battle that's shaping up, I noticed, was uh, Richard Reagan Jr. reeling in that number one of Reese Bayham. This could get interesting for sixth. Yeah, absolutely. Another good fight on the, the racetrack here in Richard Reagan Jr. We talked about him earlier. The other driver involved with the contact with John Lyday, and he went for a big spin down onto the apron in turn one early on, saved the truck, didn't bring out a yellow, but uh, Reese Bayham in that number one looks out, out the rearview mirror and sees Richard Reagan Jr. there in the seventh position. So uh, a nice recovery from that early drama uh, for Richard Reagan Jr. Again, it could have been a lot worse for him in that 46 machine with that big slide, but uh, to hold on to the seventh position with a, a shot at six seemingly there in front of him, he's got to feel pretty good about what he's done so far over these first 74 laps. Definitely, and, you know, of course, uh, you know, starting fourth, falling back to seventh, not necessarily what you want to do at all, but I think he has to cut his losses and realize it could have been a lot worse. He could have ended up overcorrecting and coming back up in front of five, six trucks and really having a bad day there. And uh, Thankfully, it didn't happen. He settled right back in, got back at it. Uh, seemed like that first set of tires was, were really injured after that spin, but this set of tires seemed to be treating him really nicely. He's starting to reel in that one truck. Granted, he's stagnated for now at about... Uh, four tenths of a second back of uh, Bayham, but he still caught that one. So if anything happens here, he's at least in a good position to capitalize on it. Yeah, the uh, the health of the tires after that big slide for Richard Reagan Jr. Uh, couldn't have been very good uh, for the rest of that run. And we oh, have a caution. Three. Oh, right there, turn three. You see it. This is zero three of Jacob Porter as uh, Bayham and Reagan passed by, sitting up against the outside retaining wall. Jacob Porter brings out the first yellow flag of the evening here on lap 74. And Jacob Porter, the driver who was in front of the 19 for a little while, just, I think, got into the corner a little bit too hot. Maybe had too much uh, rear brake dialed into the truck. And I'm not sure if he just wheel hopped or what. It looks like he really just wheel hops off into turn three, almost hung on to it, but ends up backing it in the fence. You see the replay on your screen now. And just a really tough break for him. He was already a couple of laps down in 14th. Yeah, just a uh, sort of a long, lazy slide there going into three. Maybe got in a little bit hot, uh, lost the rear end and couldn't catch it. Uh, luckily kept it up against the wall, so not to affect anybody else. But here we are, first yellow flag of the race. And now... That's something Christian Peterson didn't necessarily want to uh, see. It erases his almost 10-second lead. Uh, but uh, I imagine this will draw trucks to pit road, maybe, with a question mark. Let's see. Christian Peterson appears to be committing to pit road here. We'll see if anybody follows him onto pit lane. Christian Peterson definitely hitting pit road. Uh, looks like the first truck behind him to peel off is going to be the 22 John Lyday. Uh, the 19, Tyler Dalton stays out. He'll take over the lead with this. Uh, that's really interesting to me, considering I don't see too many other takers to stay out. Yeah, so uh, an interesting strategy. Perhaps he's hoping for a, a yellow later on that he can pit and take on fresh tires. But uh, all alone, that's kind of a sinking feeling as Christian Peterson's service is complete. He's down and away. First truck off of Pit Road. No fight there. So he'll line up P2 with fresh tires. 
Uh, and so an interesting call by Tyler Dalton, the man second in points. This guy's been chasing Christian Peterson all season long. Maybe looks at this as an opportunity to try and flip the script. Uh, but again, you know, I think they went about, what, 15 laps or so on those tires? So 15 laps can make a big difference if that's the, the amount, if I'm right there. And uh, uh, Christian Peterson seemingly is in still great shape. But maybe Tyler Dalton's got something in him that he thinks he can hold him off. Well, Tyler Dalton will have just a little bit of a cushion here from him back to the 23 on the restart. Uh, if things hold, Peterson will line up fourth behind uh, Reese Bayham and uh, Will Dravicki as well. They, they will stay out with the 19 of Tyler Dalton. So make that three trucks staying out. And fourth place will be Christian Peterson uh, lining up with those fresh tires. And you mentioned it, David. Uh... These guys are already, you know, their tires are already broke in. They're already starting to wear. I'm not sure what kind of grip they're going to have down under turn one with some big moves being made. I'm sure we're only, what, 45 laps away from the end of this race. And we'll take this opportunity for our first yellow of the evening to step aside for our final commercial break of tonight's race. You're watching the American Pool Supply Series presented by Championship Esports Association here at the Milwaukee Mile. The Milwaukee 125. Stay tuned. You won't miss a thing. We'll be right back. An abbreviated commercial break so we're about to go back to the green flag here and we don't want to miss any of this great racing action is tyler dalton on the inside of the front row the first new leader since uh well the drop of the green flag christian Pe peterson has been in control this entire way but now it's in the hands of the man second in points tyler dalton reese bayham to his outside coming into the restart zone American Ethanol green flag in the air. We're down away. No restart on the outside lane. Reese Baham asleep at the wheel, maybe. Tyler Dalton gets away clean into one and two. They go side by side. We'll have to watch Christian Peterson fight his way through the field, but they are side by side all the way back. Oh, Peterson's got to be real patient right here. Lide on the bottom after a big stack up up top via the number one truck. Now Peterson looking for a way around him. Here comes the 06. That's Campbell on the top side. Dravicki losing time on the bottom right in front of Lide. And now Lowry makes it three wide into the middle between the 23 and the 22. Three wide out of turn four. And they're turned. Oh, we got a big wreck on the front straight away. Christian Peterson is involved. Oh, that was ugly stuff right there. John Lide getting hooked. I mean, there's no way that was going to work, Andrew. They were almost four wide through three and four, and we talked about these restarts are crazy and just didn't work out right there off of four. And Kenny Lowry just got put in a bad spot. Lydey came up. I think Lydey might have not even known that Lowry was out there, and it just went on from there down the front straight away. We see Bayham involved, Lowry, of course, uh, as well as Lydey. Uh, of course, Christian Peterson, as you mentioned. Uh, Gerald Campbell was involved, maybe even the five, the 09, and more. Just an ugly scene as these guys come together off of four. And seemingly John Lyde not aware uh, that maybe the 54 of Kenny Lowry was coming through the middle there, or maybe that they were even three wide. Sort of took his normal exit off of four and was blending out towards the wall. Just ran out of room. He gets hooked in the right rear, and it's on from there. A whole bunch of trucks involved smashed up against the outside wall, including Christian Peterson. Uh, some of these guys squirted through without damage, so nice job there, but... Uh, that was a pretty big one, even though it didn't seem that big. I mean, when you're three wide at the Milwaukee Mile, bad things are going to happen. That, and we almost had Kenny Lowry go over onto his side, if not his roof there. He almost turned up onto his left side door. That was actually a pretty massive hit for him. He got hit from behind when the 06 had nowhere to go, and then the Lide came back down in front of the 5 and the 09, and that was almost terrible for those two. Uh, the 5 just 
barely getting to the outside. That was Derek Paulson. Then the 09, William Kempf just barely getting to the inside of the 22 as he actually made a great uh, save after the main wreck. What a crazy action out of turn four that time around. Yeah, the big storyline coming out of that one is uh, Christian Peterson being affected. The front end tore up, the rear end tore up. Uh, he'll be on pit road for probably a long while there, but, uh, you know, it's not necessarily uh, that detrimental to his championship. He's got a big lead points-wise over Tyler Dalton, but again, talked about the top of the show, not to say he couldn't hit a, a streak of bad luck and possibly get some bad finishes tonight. Could be one of those bad finishes. Yeah, definitely, and not that this is necessarily going to affect the momentum of Christian Peterson moving forward. He races so much and wins so much, I'm not sure if it's really going to affect him, but uh, it definitely could be the start of bad things. If, if for some reason there's more races like that, uh, as I believe the 54 and 22 will go to the rear after that yellow, uh, it, it could be something for these other drivers to capitalize on. And uh, speaking of capitalization on some big uh, incidents ahead, Richard Reagan Jr., after his big slide earlier on, will be restarting third, and I believe he has four fresh tires. Let's take a moment to talk to the man that's out front in that number 19 machine, Tyler Dalton. David Schildhouse up here in the LSR TV booth. You got a copy? I got you. How's it going? Uh, we're enjoying watching you out front there. We saw you do a little bit of strategy. You stayed out when everyone else pitted, and then went, all, went wrecking behind you. How'd you like seeing that? Oh, well, that's never a bad thing. Uh, sucked for Christian. He was definitely the fastest truck out here. He still may have quite a fast truck. We'll see. But... Uh, yeah, I was just I knew I was close on fuel and uh, this caution actually really helps that so so seemingly with this caution you're going to be able to make uh, still make it a, a one stop race uh, barring any other cautions or, or anything else like that late in the run do you have any tires left to put on the vehicle I do I took four at the first stop so I still have four more tires left at the pits all right, so that'll be helpful if you get a yellow later. So now with Christian Peterson's troubles, seemingly you're in pretty good shape. You've driven from 11th up to the lead. Uh, I'll just let you tell us how you've done it and uh, shout out some sponsors on your way to the uh, restart. Well, I, I made the mistakes in qualifying, so I was starting in the back. I was just trying to be patient on my way through the field, uh, trying to save my tires. I think I did a decent job of that. Christian got a pretty good lead, though, but uh, I think my sponsors at uh, SMS, at Sim Marketing Solutions, and Kirkwood Transportation, and my uh, team at Un Unacceptable Racing. Well, there you have it. Your current leader, Tyler Dalton, checking in with us. Appreciate the time, Tyler. Good luck. Thank you. All right. It's nice to get the thoughts of a uh, driver out there on the track. Andrew, you heard it from him. He's out in front and uh, leading the field to the restart now. He'll be the man in charge, and with the points leader suffering some issues, seemingly this race uh, in his hands to possibly take a win and take a bite out of that points lead. Pace car hits pit road. Dalton hits the accelerator. We are back to green on lap number 87. Another good restart for Tyler Dalton as they dive side by side into one and two. Richard Reagan using those four Mr. Feelgoods down on the bottom side gets by Dravicki. Now looking for that 19 who we just talked to. Tyler Dalton's going to have to find a way to fend off his 46. Difference in tires here as uh, the 46 drives, draws right up to the 19. Doesn't make the move just yet. I think he's going to play with this 19. Uh, kind of play with his uh, prey here just a little bit. And uh, we'll see what he can do. Obviously, he wants to make that move quick in case we get another wreck. You, you can't be caught on the outside here on one of these restarts. No, and you don't want to get too cute in making that move either if you're Richard Reagan. You already had a big incident uh, or big slide earlier in this run. You want to do this thing nice and calm. You know you got better tires as he gets a good run. He's sort of showing the nose down the backstretch here. Could he make a move into three? No, backs out of it. 19 got a good entry there. Maybe a little bit of a chop, but again, Tyler Dalton's going to be a, a man on a mission out front. He knows he's got a little bit older tires, but he's got to do everything he can. Gets real close to that outside wall off of four. Richard Reagan Jr. is going to have to show some patience if he's going to get around him clean. He took a really odd entry there, but he's going to get a huge run. If he plays it just right out of turn number two, he started to gain some that time. Didn't quite get the run he wanted, though. Not going to draw up to that 19 just yet. He's got to keep working with what he can do here and the tools at his disposal. Although, really, this is just exactly what John Theodore wants to see. He's able to just start quietly creeping into the picture. Watch that 84 truck from behind, as well as Derek Paulson in the five. John Theodore is third in points, about uh, almost 100 points behind Dollar, Tyler Dalton coming into tonight's event. So he stands to benefit from the problems of Christian Peterson, who now finds himself down in the 11th position. 
uh, does Christian Peterson. So he's still under power, but well back in this field. All eyes still up front as Richard Reagan Jr. in the number 46 continues to mount a charge, trying to figure out a way past Tyler Dalton on those older tires. Again, just seemingly catching him in all the wrong places through the corner, preventing himself from getting a good run off the corner to make a move. I think that was the closest he got so far to, to passing this 19 for the lead. He got really close on the back straight away, uh, tried to kind of intimidate that 19 just a little bit. Unfortunately, this isn't one of the old NASCAR games. You can't just press a button and suddenly cause the driver in front to make a mistake. And really, Richard Reagan Jr. is just looking for a way around, lays the bumper to Tyler Dalton just a little bit, let him know that he's there. Of course, he just might employ that three bump rule. Yeah, it reminds me of uh, Teddy Christopher up at Stafford Speedway in Connecticut. Uh, two taps, let you know he's there. The third one, you're getting moved. So uh, we'll see if Richard Reagan Jr. employs the same strategy that made TC13 so popular and so famous up in that region of the country and across the, the country, I should say. So uh, it's nice to see that. But, you know, the, the, the patience level here is going to start to dwindle down. We're coming up to 30 laps to go. And uh, if you got those fresh tires like Richard Reagan Jr. does, you got to use them. You can't just lay back there and be patient. You got to make a move here, make Tyler Dalton sweat a little bit. Yeah, of course, you know, Richard Reagan's got to capitalize on those new tires while he can. And he's really, uh, I think, about at his limit as far as pushing those tires. Because once you push them hard enough, once you put enough laps down, they're just going to get as hot and as, as slimy as the tires on the 19 truck right now. So I, I really think he might just have run out his... I guess advantage over Tyler Dalton of course I think that 19 is faster to begin with add in the fact that Richard just tore his tires up and I, I really think Tyler Dalton might have just won this thing if we go green and if he doesn't make any more mistakes as possible it's definitely possible that uh, the window is closed for Richard Reagan to make a, a move around Tyler Dalton with the fresh tires is sort of as you pointed out equalized now as you push him and, and, and heat him up you really lose the advantage of the freshness uh, when you overheat them, especially in the iRacing simulation. It's very realistic in that sense. So you start slipping and sliding, all of a sudden, new tires don't matter. You're just as out of control as everybody else. So Richard Reagan Jr. now uh, seemingly losing a little bit of time as Tyler Dalton stretches the lead out over four tenths of a second. So almost a tenth of a second a lap faster now is Tyler Dalton. That's got to make him one very happy driver. And the other driver that's going to be wearing a grin here soon is going to be John Theodore as he starts to reel that 46 in. That will be for the second position if he can make that move, if he can catch Richard Reagan Jr. And actually the 46 starting out another charge on that 19. It almost looked like maybe Tyler Dalton started to, to falter just a little bit through three and four. And maybe Richard Reagan Jr. was able to cool his tires down just enough to get a little bit of grip through the corner, trying to do something here, running an interesting line through turn one and sweeping back down to the bottom side through turn two he's doing the same thing on the other end of the track in three and four got a big run that time he's almost back to the 19 now you know sometimes as a race car driver uh it's a little bit harder to focus when you're out front of the field you don't have somebody in front of you to use as a reference point uh for your braking and your turning and, and all of that so someone like uh like the the leader right now tyler dalton uh, hadn't been out front up until this point, so he's had somebody uh, to sort of run around and use a reference point, but now he's out front and uh, maybe doesn't have the same pace or the same ability to run consistent lap times as, yeah, <laughs> Richard Reagan Jr. definitely closed up from that four-tenth lead to under two-tenths in just a lap, so one little slip uh, can really have a big effect here. Is two very distinct lines the 19 goes up the hill a little bit leaving that bottom lane open you can't do that very many times richard reagan jr is going to jump all over that if he does it again but uh, still as we approach lap 98 now things really hot and heavy between these three trucks up front 28 laps to go another bumper laid there from reagan to dalton can't move him out of the line, but definitely letting him know he's there. But I don't think it's going to do anything. Tyler Dalton, of course, has to defend here and has to try to hang on to this win. And, uh, you know, as much as Richard Reagan wants to try and move him out of the way, it's going to be tough to do that, again, without just completely blowing the corner and sending that 19 around. It's it, it's an art form, moving somebody out of the way. It really is. It, it seems like maybe it's just a dirty move. No, it, it's really an art form to, to use, you know, the fenders, the bumpers that these guys have at their disposal to get that position it's not easy and Richard Reagan Jr. definitely finding that out he loses some time there he, he gave the bumper to Dalton now he's going to lay back probably and I'm not sure if he can make that time back up just coming to 26 laps to go as we come on to lap 100 here in just a moment you know what else is an art form 
this fine camera work that you're seeing as you look out the rear bumper of Tyler Dalton at the front end of Richard Reagan Jr. Given that bump just a few laps ago, Cisco Scaramuza doing a great job bringing you the sights and sounds of this race. It's so cool to see that. I love seeing that. But yeah, looking at the line that Richard Reagan Jr. is running now, I'm seeing what he's doing. He is moving to more of a diamond uh, of the apex style line around this racetrack. A little bit slower, a little bit higher on entry, but then yanks it hard to the bottom and stands on it, makes up a ton of time through the middle and off the corner, uh, which is allowing him to keep pace. And I'm telling you, he's got, you know, 25 laps, uh, 24 laps now to get back to that back bumper. If he gets back there for a third time, that third bump is going to be a lot more aggressive than the first two. Yeah, this track is quite similar to New Hampshire, for example, where you do kind of diamond the corner a little bit. And in this case, it's really almost a half diamond where Reagan is entering high and, you know, dragging that truck down to the bottom, fighting it, muscling it down in the center of the corner, trying to get that run off. Is actually, here comes John Theodore, almost got right to the back end of that 46 truck. And man, he is definitely now looking for that second place position if he wasn't already. Yeah, this is uh, this is far from over. We got three drivers with a, a very good shot at this thing. Should something go wrong between the top two, John Theodore is in a great position to take advantage of that and possibly take a win away if the front two get a little physical. But Richard Reagan Jr. got a great run through one and two, closes right back up to the back bumper. And when you're in second place stalking a guy, you get into that corner a little bit heavier because you know you got your reference point for braking, and we're seeing that Richard Reagan close right up now. Now he's going to start showing the nose to sort of move his truck around in that rearview mirror of Tyler Dalton, make him think, make him worry more about what's happening out back instead of focusing on what's in the windshield. Yeah, and realistically, you know, at this point, I think the 46 has two options. I think Richard Reagan can either throw it into the corner and try and get to the back of, uh, of the 19 of Tyler Dalton and, and try and just move him out of the way that way or if he can get enough of a run on the straightaways like he's doing he might be able to just do it just right to where you know going off into the entry of the corner he can try and just throw it to the inside if not pull off a complete slide job which is going to be really tough to do with no banking at least just get to the door of the 19 move him up the track and at that point of course as actually he lays another bumper to Tyler Dalton this time looking to the outside of the track out of turn number two can't get the nose out there but really i mean do you use the bumper or the door at this point because either way you really you're gonna risk john theodore coming through he's right there on your bumper for richard reagan yeah seemingly a lot to worry about for the driver of the 46 truck right now richard reagan trying to take over the lead trying to hold on to second from a very hungry john theodore as well and remember like i said john theodore third in points so he's got something to say here he's got some stuff on the line trying to chase down tyler dalton who's trying to take advantage of Christian Peterson's misfortune. So a lot at stake here, more than just the win. Uh, points at a premium as well. Tyler Dalton doing a great job, though, not buckling under the pressure, still holding on to the lead as we got uh, 20 laps to go, coming to 19 to go now. Richard Reagan's got to figure out something here soon because nothing he's done up to this point, aside from a couple taps of the rear bumper, has done much to rattle Tyler Dalton. Reagan has already hit him three times, looked high, looked low, looked right through him, I think, at this point. And I, I really feel like it's almost the opposite of what you'd expect, where I think Tyler Dalton is ice cold in that truck right now, whereas I think Richard Reagan's starting to get a little bit hot, trying to get uh, you know get in that position, getting a little frustrated. And you know laps are winding down. Now 20 laps to go, coming to 19 to go this time by, David. He's going to start to get desperate. I see rookie, uh, rookie straps in the back of that truck. Obviously, that doesn't mean a whole lot on a simulator, but either way, it seems like he's a rookie to this uh, series, maybe. And I mean, he's definitely probably looking for that breakthrough win. Uh, leaves the bottom open there. Theodore thought about sticking the nose in. Thought better of it. It's just, it's so tough to make that move work. Uh, the way these cars, and, or sh I should say trucks, that's an easy one to mi mix up, but the way these trucks get around this racetrack, it's so tempting to stick your nose in somewhere where it looks like there's an opening, but really the guy's just trying to, to run a different line and, and sweep it back down. So no contact yet, but again, uh, the move's not going to come to the outside. So if you're Tyler Dalton, you're just defending the inside lane and hoping that Richard Reagan keeps it clean. These guys don't want to wreck each other for the win. You don't want that controversy, but... I can tell you, Andrew, I've seen it here before not that long ago at the Milwaukee Mile where somebody just licked the stamp and sent it into three for the win. Wasn't a popular move, but it got him a checkered flag. That's another thing, if you're Richard Reagan, you know, to consider. Do you want to just completely move him and risk uh, people maybe returning the favor later on in the season, or do you just want to, you know, get that win, whatever you want to do? I mean, uh, 
it's up to you really, but if, if this battle wasn't good enough as we come down almost to 15 laps to go here, David, Jeremy Adams is walking his way through the field and he's closing in on these top three. He just went by fourth place, Derek Paulson. I believe Jeremy Adams is still two laps down though, so all for naught, but yes, a fast truck nonetheless. He had his issues on pit road earlier, missing the pit stall. Was running second or third for most of the race, so still a lot of speed in that number 89, but uh, you know, John, John Theodore, uh, Richard Reagan, and Tyler Dalton, your top three here. Uh, fourth place, uh, Derek Paulson's about almost three seconds back of the lead, so really it's a, a three-car battle uh, as Reagan closes up once again on the back bumper. As we get uh, down to inside of 15 laps to go here from the Milwaukee Mile, what a great finish this is setting up to be. I'm telling you, it's not done. These thing, these boys will get physical if it comes down to the checkered flag. It's just, like you said, Andrew, is it going to be the bumper or is it going to be the door? And I think these guys would like to maybe use the door because that means they're already in position. Why not use both if you're Richard Ray and get to the back end of Tyler Dalton, maybe hit him in the left rear this time and uh, really focus on getting to that corner, move him up, then maybe use a door to uh, finish the move off. Uh, but really, I mean, I guess go back to real racing, Chicagoland, Kyle Larson throws a big move on Kyle Busch, but then Kyle Busch is able to come right back at him. If you're Richard Reagan, when do you make the move? Do you make it in one and two if the opportunity presents itself? Do you make it a lap early uh, You know, if the opportunity is there? Or do you wait until the last corner of the last lap and only have that one shot so that Tyler Dalton can't come back and do the same thing to you? If it's me in the 46 and I'm, I'm putting the bumper to the leader, I'm doing it at a point where I know he can't get back to me. We've seen that time and time again. Uh, to your point, Kyle Larson, Kyle Busch at Chicagoland. Uh, Larson got a little physical with Bush, and then Bush had the opportunity to pay him back, and he did. If you're going to get physical with a guy, never give him the opportunity to return the favor. So if you're Richard Reagan and that's the strategy that you're going to employ, you, you, it's tough to say when the right time to do it is, but if you're going to do it, make sure it's effective enough, then it cannot be done back to you. And as this battle rages on, we're getting closer and closer to 10 laps to go. It's been goat time for probably 20 laps or so since that restart. But these guys, I, I think, are starting to lose some grip. You see this top three battle starting to, to widen out. And yeah, granted, yes, uh, Jeremy Adams is a couple of laps down. He could play into this battle. I mean, obviously, if he can pressure one of these guys just by being there into maybe making a mistake just out of the blue, Maybe they wreck. Maybe he gets another position. So, I mean, there's no reason for him to just completely sit back. If he can just get there, maybe not race these guys too tough, but just kind of show that he's there. I mean, it, you know, if you're one of these guys up in the front, maybe it pressures you into doing something. As Richard Reagan gets back to Tyler Dalton, that's going to be the story, I think, for the next 10 laps. Just getting back to him and trying to make that move if you're Richard Reagan. I, so far, I think that's the fifth time he's hit him, and he still hasn't gone by. Yeah, it's uh, coming to 10 laps to go this time by is Tyler Dalton. So Richard Reagan running out of time. If he's going to lay the bumper to him to move him, it just it hasn't worked for him yet if that's what he's been trying to do or maybe he's just trying to play with his mind. There's a lot of mental games that occur between drivers. Even though they can't talk to each other, you can still play a lot of mind games with your competition. But uh, again, it, it all comes down to desperation. How badly does Richard Reagan Jr. want to get this checkered flag how badly does Tyler Dalton want to win this race? I'm pretty sure the answer to that's the same. They both won it really, really badly. So then it comes down to, if you're Richard Reagan Jr., what are you willing to do to get it? And if you're Tyler Dalton, what are you willing to risk to block that guy so that he can't take it away from you? And as we have a slight lull in the action up at the lead, is actually Reagan's going to get to him this time, hits him in the left rear, so never mind. He is right up on Tyler Dalton again. Uh, and actually, I think he has his nose to the inside, down the back straightaway. Can't quite get there. Will he throw it into three? No, he's going to get back in line. But I uh, quickly wanted to mention that John Lydie is working by uh, William Kemp and has gotten by him. And uh, Christian Peterson is actually looking for some spots, too, as Richard Reagan gets the run down the front straight away out of turn four. Can he make the move in turn number one? No. Slides back in behind. Uh, this is getting a lot more physical now between these drivers. Here comes Richard Reagan Jr. Again to the back bumper, gets into him. Sideways goes the 19 up the hill, but manages to hold on to it. So still single file. My goodness, this is getting good right now, Andrew. Hold on to your hat. Richard Reagan is not messing around at this point. He's playing with that left rear, sort of like uh, Kyle Harvick and Kyle Busch at New Hampshire a few weeks ago. How physical will it get, and will it be controversial? That's what the fans want to see. This is getting good as we're at lap 118. 
125 is the distance. Here comes Reagan again. A big shot into the rear. Crumples the rear end one more time through the center of the corner. But Tyler Dalton, unaffected by it, continues on and pulls away. And as this battle for first and second rages on, John Theodore almost got dragged out of it by Jeremy Adams. Now the 89 falls back in behind the 84. And John Theodore almost gets to the back end of Richard Reagan Jr. Now Richard Reagan tries to mount and charge on the front straightaway. Gets loose, hangs on to it. Great save out of the corner again. Uh, but this time, I mean, you start getting loose out of the corner. Can you actually mount that run with the line he's been running? Can you actually get that run down the straightaway to the next corner like he's been trying to do all race long? I don't think Richard Reagan Jr. has much to worry about when it comes to John Theodore. Just better pace over on that 46 truck. All his focus is out the windshield right now, trying to track down that 19. He can ruffle the feathers, but can he pluck the duck? I don't know. We'll find out as we come down five laps to go this time by. Tyler Dalton holds on to the lead by just a couple tenths of a second. Richard Reagan Jr. not going away. He's already laid the bumper to him countless times up to this point has not upset the 19 enough to move him out of the lead he's running out of time now as the laps are winding down if you're john theodore here do you let jeremy adams go maybe ruffle these guys up just a little bit try and get that one position obviously that could mean uh, sealing the deal for tyler dalton or it could mean you know position here for, for john theodore i don't think he's going to but it, it's certainly an option as richard reagan jr it looks like he's starting to get really loose out of the corner five laps to go that time and i this battle just continues to rage on but a lot more space between these three now yeah it's never enough space when you're the leader and you're trying to get a checkered flag as we're now on five laps to go i'm too excited i can't even count uh how many laps we got left, but Tyler Dalton, his heart has got to be beating through his chest right now, knowing that there's a win on the line. His back bumper has been getting destroyed by Richard Reagan, but he's held onto it. What a drive being displayed by these two drivers. A lot of desire, a lot of want between the two of them as this battle rages on. Uh, still clean, still green, coming down to what should be a fantastic finish. And a bit of a bobble there out of Dalton. Loses just a little bit of time, but then gains it back. I really think that 46 has just about done his tires in. We're going to come around to three laps to go this time by. And realistically, David, I'm just not sure if Richard Reagan has the pace left in those rear tires, or I guess the grip left in those rear tires, to actually use that line to get a big run out of the corner. He's just he's sliding. He really is. He's just completely in a four-wheel slide out of turn number four each time around. Turn number two, not quite as bad, uh, but he's really just, I, I think, thrown the truck around too much. I'm not sure if he can actually catch him. Uh, he may have uh, he may have given it everything that he could have there just you know and I, I want to uh, commend Richard Reagan jr if that was the case and he's run out of the uh, the grip to, to get back to the rear bumper of Tyler Dalton he gave him everything he could and it was clean you got to give him that tip of the cap and uh, assuming he holds on to this podium position looking forward to hearing his thoughts uh, about this great battles were two laps to go. White flag next time by Tyler Dalton still in control. But again, here comes Richard Reagan Jr. Seemingly finding a burst of speed through one and two. Still just one truck length between these two guys as they go down the backstretch. Now under a mile and a half to go in this race. You saw Reagan hang on to it once more out of turn number two that time around. And now coming to the white flag. Can he get the grip to maybe drive up to uh, Tyler Dalton out of turn number two and throw it into turn number three? White flag in the air. One more mile to go to dis, uh, determine a winner here. It's Tyler Dalton out front of the 19, Richard Reagan Jr. in the 46, beaten and banging on the rear bumper over the last 25 laps or so. It's been a fantastic show to watch, but Tyler Dalton has been unfazed, showing the way around, looking for the checkered flag. The man second in points, trying to capitalize on the misfortunes of Christian Peterson earlier on in a big wreck as they work through three and four for the final time. Richard Reagan's not going to be able to get it done. Off of four, Tyler Dalton, checkered flag in the air. He's going to win here at the Milwaukee Mile. And as we've been talking about, a great drive out of Richard Reagan, but how bittersweet that must feel. On the cusp of getting this big win here at Milwaukee, couldn't get it done. But again, a great battle out of him, great drive out of him. Very clean, but definitely used that 19 truck up. Yeah, the, uh, the fabricators smile when they see that, or at least the guys that don't work for the team, because they got a lot of money coming their way to fix these trucks up. But again, that's why we put bumpers on them, because the guys got to use them. And in the end, 
Tyler Dalton is your winner, getting the checkered flag. What he needed to do here tonight to bring the championship fight back to Christian Peterson. It is Richard Reagan Jr. coming home in second. Let's do the rest of the full field rundown here. John Theodore going to come home in third. Derek Paulson is going to come home in the fourth position. Fifth It's going to go to Paul Henley. John Lyde, after starting on the outside of the front row, is going to come home sixth. Christian Peterson recovers from that earlier wreck. Still salvages a seventh place finish. William Kempf is going to come home eighth. Kenny Lowry uh, makes up a whole bunch of positions. Starting 17th, comes home ninth. And Reese Bayham comes home in the 10th position. Finishing 11th is Brad Carpenter in the number 31. He's the last car or last truck on the lead lap. Will Dravicki comes home one lap down in 12th. Then it's uh, Will, uh, sorry, no. Uh, Jeremy Adams, who came home two laps down, he almost impeded on that battle at the end. Jacob Porter comes home 14th, uh, two laps down as well. Tom Morano 15th, Jeremy Watkins 16th, and then Gerald Campbell had an early exit out of the speedway. He finishes 17th, and Gary Sexton 18th. There's your full field rundown after 125 miles of intense racing. We'll come right back on the other side of this commercial break to hear the thoughts of your top three finishers. Don't go anywhere. You're watching the American Pool Supply Truck Series brought to you by the Championship Esports Association on the iRacing Esports Network. This broadcast is the copyrighted work of LSR TV and may not be rebroadcast, retranslated, or used in any form without the express written consent of Live Sim Racing LLC and iRacing.com Motorsport Simulations. LSR TV would like to thank you for your support and we hope you enjoy tonight's broadcast. Welcome back to the Milwaukee Mile. We've got 125 laps in the books here. Uh, just a fantastic race. Uh, as you saw it live on LSR TV and the iRacing Esports Network, it's the Championship Esports Association American Pool Supply Truck Series and uh, Tyler Dalton that came out on top. Before we hear from your winner, I want to talk about our friends over at the American Pool Supply Company. Coverage of the CEA American Pool Supply Truck Series is brought to you by the American Pool Supply Company. It's a wholesale distributor of pool and landscaping products. They serve pool maintenance, resorts, apartment complexes, and HOAs in the Las Vegas area. You can learn more by visiting them on Facebook at American Pool Supply LV. So uh, big thanks to them for sponsoring this great racing series. And uh, Andrew, what a, what a fantastic finish. We're going to hear from our top three finishers, and I bet you there's one very excited driver in Tyler Dalton. We'll talk to him right now as we'll pull him in. 
Hear his thoughts and hear how he held off the charge of Richard Reagan Jr. Tyler, it's David Schildhouse up in the booth again. Second time this evening. You got a copy? I got you. Well, the first time we talked to you, you just inherited the lead. You knew that you had your work cut out for you, but you had the opportunity to get a win. You put it all together now in victory lane, but boy, you had to earn it. What's your back bumper look like right now? Uh, I don't think it has any paint on it anymore. <laughs> Richard Reagan Jr. gave you all that you could handle, but really, from the driver's seat, when you got a guy behind you beating the rear bumper off of you, what does it feel like, and how much did that upset you while you were driving? I mean, it definitely goes in the back of your back of your mind uh, where you want to put enough of a gap where someone can't do that. But I was not really anticipating the race to go green towards the end there. I was anticipating being able to put on my last set of tires. And I knew that uh, Richard and John behind me at least had two tires. And I knew they were a little bit faster. So I pretty much just had to run my line. And I, I was still, I think, equal to maybe a little faster than them in three and four. He was definitely fast. Uh, Richard was definitely faster than me in one and two. And that's where you saw quite a few bumps, but I knew if I just didn't give them the bottom, I would be okay. Yeah. That's kind of what we were guessing as well. You want to protect that bottom because there's really no passing to the outside. So that's your second win of the season. And uh, as again, Big news tonight, Christian Peterson gets caught up in a wreck, finishes seventh, and is the man coming in second in points. That's got to make you feel good to maximize your points here tonight with a win with Christian Peterson finishing back in seventh. Oh, yeah, that would definitely help in the points. Um, last uh, last weekend, I really should have finished better than sixth place if I led a bunch of that race, but I took too many too many tires on the last pit stop and then didn't do have a very good restart on the last green white checkered. So I lost a bunch of points last week but uh yeah this helps a lot i hate it for christian because he was by far the fastest guy out there i think he at the caution he had like a seven and a half second lead on me i may have been able to stay within a few seconds of him if uh we had been on equal tires and starting um first and second and me, me not starting 11th but he was definitely faster so i hate on one hand i hate seeing something bad happen to him but I'll definitely take the victory. Absolutely. That's the true meaning of competition and respect as well for a uh, fierce competitor. But really, the, the situation you needed to capitalize on tonight, and you put it all together, uh, not relenting the lead once you took it over after that incident. And, and the strategy to stay out when everybody else pitted didn't come back to bite you, even though you had a little bit older tire. Once they equalized, you seemingly were in good shape. H how much uh, you know were you sliding around there at the end while trying to hold off Richard Reagan Jr.? Honestly, I never really got loose there at the end. Um, if anything, I mean, I was a little bit tight, but the truck never really felt that tight or that loose. It felt pretty stable the entire run. Well, th for the couple turns, I didn't have the rear tires on the ground, but um, I mean, the truck really never got out of control. It felt nice and stable. I was down maybe a tenth or two speed from not having the fresh tires, but uh, as far as how it felt, it felt good. So you got 10 races left now until the end of the season. You'll make up some points on Christian Peterson as well. What does the rest of the season project for you over these next 10 races? What do you think you're going to be able to do? Oh, well, my goal right now is just at, at least stay in the top two in points. Um, it'll be a mighty steep hill to climb to uh, beat Peterson for that championship. He's one of the best drivers out here. It's going to take a lot more nights like this where he's going to have to have something wrong and I'm going to have to pretty much have a perfect night in order for me to pass him. But uh, that's that's going to be our goal. But uh, the good news is right now we've got a decent gap back to third as well now, so I don't have to really worry about losing anything. I just need to do what I can to go up there and try to get Christian. Well, Tyler, great job tonight. You get the win. I'll hand the mic over to you to say hello to all the friends, family, and sponsors who make this thing happen, and uh, everyone who helps get you here to the racetrack. I've got to thank Todd Kirkwood. He's my sponsor. He runs uh, Sim Marketing Solutions, SMS. They're my main sponsor on the truck. He also runs Kirkwood Transportation. Um, I've got to thank my uh, teammates at Unacceptable Racing. Unfortunately, none of them can make it tonight, but uh, I always have a blast racing with them. Um, and I also want to say, if you don't mind, um, I do stream when I'm racing. I stream uh, on Twitch at twitch.tv slash zone15. So if you ever want to see 
both the broadcast and an in car view. Uh, check out my stream. I actually have a link in my stream to, to the broadcast for people to watch that, that as well. Um, have a, a, a lot of fun, and I want to thank everyone that was watching me tonight, cheering me on, and I uh, had fun. For the second time in 2018, Tyler Dalton claims a checkered flag. Congratulations. We'll look forward to seeing you next time out. Thank you. There he is, your winner tonight, Tyler Dalton, driver of the number 19 Chevy Silverado. Great run for him, makes up some points on Christian Peterson. And, uh, Andrew, we're going to turn it over to you to hear from the, the guy that probably doesn't have much of a front end left, much like Tyler didn't have much of a rear end left. That's going to be Richard Reagan Jr., our second place finisher. We'll get him in here and catch his thoughts. Richard Reagan Jr., what a battle. Do you have a copy? Loud and clear. Well, it was definitely exciting to watch for us. I'm sure it was uh, rather, uh, I guess, exciting in a few different ways for you trying to get by the 19 of Tyler Dalton. First off, what was your goal there other than just to win? Yeah, basically just to win. Um, this is my first start in the series. I don't come in here running for points or nothing. So um, realistically, um, I I was going to be happy with the top five. Um once I got hit there on like lap four from the 22, I think it was, I thought my chances of that top five was done. Got a caution there after a really good green flag run. Got the damage fixed. Um, wrecked happened right in front of me. Avoided it. And then I got into a really good spot between uh, Tyler and, uh, and John. Yes, yeah, so Richard, I think I lost count uh, of how many times you hit Tyler Dalton there at about, mm, I'd say, seven or eight. Uh realistically you know what were you trying to do there other than obviously you wanted to pass him but exactly how did you plan to do it? obviously you were hitting him you're definitely trying to get a run how did it work out i guess in your mind basically this is a big big short track it's a short track with big straightaways so you need to use your bumper a little bit i didn't want to wreck him or nothing i was trying to move him up the track and get in his mind a little bit um but like after 10 laps, I saw that he was really burning off the right front because he was really getting tight coming out of two and four. So I just started tried to back it down a little bit. But um, after I backed it down, he backed it down. So I had to keep putting pressure on him. And every time I'd get a run on him, I would lose all my momentum. This place is just really, really hard to pass. Yeah, we definitely saw that tonight. You, uh, after receiving the shot in the lap four or five, like you mentioned, uh, you, you kept on tracking literally, and you almost get a place. Uh, you know, uh, I guess if you had to kind of weigh out how you would have preferred to get on, you know, did you want to use the bumper in the door, or just hopefully you just drive on by on a straightaway if you could? Uh, I just wanted to drive by him. I, like I said, I just wanted to use the bumper to move him out of the groove a little bit uh, and throw off his, his momentum coming off the corner. And I didn't want to wreck him nothing. That's why I backed out a few times. And I told him that. And um, I guess he wasn't happy at first with me using the bumper. But, hey, uh, I didn't wreck him. And I was just trying to play mind games with him. So everything's good. Hey, man, there's bumpers and fenders on these things for a reason. It definitely showed why they're there and how to use them cleanly. It was amazing watching you wheel that number 46. Who do you have to thank for this great opportunity in that car? Uh, I'd like to thank my mom and my aunt for always watching my races. You guys at LSR TV, Multiple Sclerosis Society, Blue Shock Optics, Folds of Honor, Sim Racing Apps, Neonism, First Ford, First Auto Group, and everybody else that just watches. Sounds good, Richard. Thank you for your time. Hopefully we're talking to you in the future. Thank you. And down to David Schildhaus with the driver who came home third place tonight. It's going to be John Theodore in the 84. Working on get John Theodore here. John, David Schildhaus up in the LSR TV booth. You got a copy? Yes, sir. How you guys doing? A great run tonight. You get yourself a third-place finish, matches your third-place position in the point standings, and you see a guy like Christian Peterson run into trouble. So you make up some points. Tell us about your night. Uh, pretty good night. Not, no real drama. Just, you know, riding consistent. Um, without being able to shift here at Milwaukee, it's a pretty tame race. So, uh, you know, good solid debut for the uh, Pot Bangers Chevy Silverado. It looked pretty good, and you watched one heck of a fight for the lead between Tyler Dalton and Richard Reagan Jr. there in front of you over the closing 15 or 20 laps. Were you kind of secretly hoping that they got into each other and maybe you could luck into a win? I mean, I, I was 
trying my best to see if there was a way that I could move around Richard and challenge Ty, Tyler for the lead. I knew that I had that Richard and I were both on better Tyler's than Tyler was. So uh, it's just so hard to pass at Milwaukee. It's really a single glute groove racetrack. And again, like without being able to downshift in third, I was really having trouble getting the run off of the corners that I needed. Maybe with some more practice, I could have figured out a line that would work for that. But I was just struggling with trying to get the position inside. Um, so, yeah, I mean, obviously I was I was sitting there looking, you know, if, there, if opportunity opened the door like it did when uh, the 22 and the 54 got together and caused that big stack up, I was definitely going to take advantage for sure. <laughs> Yeah, you got to take advantage at this sort of racetrack. And so when you got two guys battling in front of you and you see bumpers being exchanged and all that, but you also have a little bit of pressure from a lapped car behind you. Tell us how that was affecting your race. Uh, that So that was interesting because I knew I on my stream we'd been tracking, you know, the 89 ran out of fuel and got himself two laps down. So I knew when he, when I saw him coming up, I knew that what he was thinking, which was if he can get one lap back the hard way, and then a caution comes out, he gets the lucky dog, he's back on the lead lap. So when I saw him start to close in, I was definitely aware. But when he noticed that we were, you know, that it was only like 10 laps to go, he kind of, he didn't really put up a ton of pressure. So I, pre I really appreciate Jeremy, you know, being aware of the situation and respecting that the three of us were running for a race win and uh, not putting too much pressure on me once he got to my bumper. Yeah, definitely the uh, the classy move there by Jeremy Adams, who had some speed himself, certainly proved it there. So you bring home a third place finish. The points leader has a bad night, and uh, you you do better than William Kempf, who's your next closest competitor. Only came in three points behind you for that third position. So a good points day for you. How does the rest of the season? Ten races left to go. How does it sort of uh, pan out for you, and what do you see happening? Uh, so. I actually haven't looked too far. I, I kind of just look at what the next race coming up is. I know we've got one more dirt track, I think, on the schedule, which I am not good at dirt. <laughs> so that's going to be a weak spot for me. But I think that, 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 you know, the rest of the season should play out well. Hopefully I'll have a little bit more time to uh, maybe get some testing in. And, you know, we'll see. I'm, I'm, I'm This is my first year in any leagues, much less this one. So Seeing myself in the top three in points feels really good, but you know, obviously, you always want to try for more. I don't. Kate, the Christian Peterson's got a pretty big lead at this point. It would take a lot for me to try to make a run at him, and also, you know, with Tyler finishing in front of me again and getting the second one of the season, uh, he's in second place. So it's going to be tough. But I'm feeling really good about where I am at this point in the season. I never thought I'd be this high up in the standings in the league like this. Yeah, certainly a great effort. Nothing to uh, to hang your hat on or hang your head about. Uh, it's a solid run, especially for your first foray into league racing. So, John, I'll put it to you. The microphone is all yours. Third place finish tonight. Give a shout out to friends, family, and sponsors who helped get you here to the racetrack. Yeah, certainly. Um, so, you know, big shout out to uh, Pot Bangers. They're a local 503C, I think it is 5013. Anyway, they're they're a charitable organization here in St. Louis. Uh, that uh, basically, you know, cooks food and gets it to those who need it. So very good organization. You can check them out at potbangers.org. That's potbangers with a Z. Um, also, shout out to all my viewers on Twitch. Um, in particular, you know, G Benson 208. He's always throwing the uh, bit cheers and stuff my way. So appreciate that. We had a bunch of other uh, folks hanging out tonight. Um, my moderators do a good job when I get the occasional uh, troll that comes in. They wrangle that pretty quickly so I can stay focused on what I'm doing on the track. And uh, yeah, um, so pretty good stuff. Uh, definitely, uh, you know, one, one, definitely one shout out to uh, Corey Bush as well. You know, the, the campaign didn't go the way that we wanted, unfortunately, but um, you know, really appreciate her run and it was a real pleasure having her on the truck in the uh, closing weeks of the campaign. Fantastic stuff there, John. Congratulations on a well-earned third-place finish here tonight. We'll look forward to seeing you next week at Eldora. Cool. Thanks, guys. See you then. Third-place finisher John Theodore matches his third place in the point standings. Uh, good run. Makes up some points on Christian Peterson as well. So uh, a good run overall for him. So seemingly with, uh, like we said, Andrew, at the top of the show, Christian Peterson runs into a couple of issues. 
puts these guys right in the uh, right in the wheelhouse to make up some points and maybe shake things up in this championship fight. Yeah, definitely. Of course, like these guys are mentioning, Christian Peterson is out there pretty much in his own zip code, but. As we talked about at the top of the show here, David, it's not impossible yet. We have some really challenging tracks coming up. Eldora next week, then Canadian Tire Motorsports Park, even Irwindale, New Smyrna. Some very interesting tracks coming up, even down to the finale at Rockingham. That is going to be a heck of a battle to watch. So it's not entirely impossible for somebody like Tyler Dalton, who won tonight, or John Theodore coming home third, to, to get out there and maybe challenge for the championship. It's going to be tough. It's going to take uh, the right sorts of issues. Uh, I guess for Christian Peterson, but tonight was, you know, I guess an example of what can happen. Granted, Christian Peterson still came back to seventh place. It easily, easily could have been worse. I mean, we almost had the 54 go over. Imagine if it, that had been Christian Peterson, and imagine if he had actually gone over. So anything can still happen here, David. Certainly nothing guaranteed until the last lap is completed at Rockingham for the season finale. But uh, uh, again, anything can happen over the next 10 weeks. We saw it happen with Christian Peterson tonight and very well could happen again in the future. So something to think about. But with that, round number 17 falls into our rearview mirror. We want to thank all the people behind the scenes who make all of this possible, starting with Kyle Barnes and the Championship Esports Association. Also give a shout out to Drew Adamson and all the staff at the iRacing Esports Network. Our folks behind the scenes here are Laura Lawson, DJ Lyon, and Evan Pasoko. And of course, got to give a big shout out to the boys on the broadcast team tonight, starting with Cisco Scaramuza did a great job bringing you those camera shots, a lot of battling, and uh, we got a great look at that tonight. So big thanks to him. Also up here in the broadcast booth, my broadcast partner, Andrew Cardinale, and I'm David Schildhouse. And again, thank you for tuning in. We want to congratulate uh, your winner here tonight, Tyler Dalton, on getting the win. And uh, just a reminder, our next race on the iRacing Esports Network kicks off in only about four hours from now as the iRacing official supercar series kicks off from the Autodromo Nacional Monza at 3.15 Eastern Standard Time AM here on the uh, iRacing Esports Network. That race and every race of the 2018 CEA American Pool Supply Truck Series can be found right here on the iRacing Esports Network brought to you by LSR TV, your home for sim racing. So again, for Andrew Cardinale, I'm David Schildhaus. Big thanks to Cisco Scaramuza for making us sound and look really good tonight. And until next time, good night from Milwaukee.